Wave 2 of TKO Studios. Let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode here at A Week in Geekdom. Geo here talking with you guys about TKO Studios. They kindly offered me all of the Wave 2 trade paperbacks, uh, collected editions of their new titles uh, for me to review. I already did a video on Sentient, so I'm not going to cover that. But for this video, I'm going to talk about <laughs> the three remaining books because I thought they were all uh, pretty unique, pretty... Uh, interesting. If you want a more uh, cool little discussion, head on over to uh, the Omnibus Collectors Network on YouTube, specifically Omnibros Live, where all six of us reviewed the four books and we gave our thoughts and all that stuff. So a big thank you, like I said, to TKO Studios for sending this my way. This is amazing. Thank you so very much for very different titles. Eve of Extinction, you got the banks, you got sentient, and of course, pound for pound. And I'm going to start with this one. Underground MMA fighter Danny Libra fears nothing except for her recurring blackouts and fractured memories that obscure a bloody past. Her sister gets kidnapped and it, it, things just escalate from there. It sort of felt like I was reading a B-movie uh, Quentin Tarantino-esque grindhouse type movie. Uh, the art in it is really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. Very bright, colorful, cartoonish, and extremely violent. I mean, this is one of the more tamer images that you'll find in the book. But this exemplifies what I mean when it's big, bold, and, and just gorgeous to look at. I'd love the color palette in this book. It's all over the place. It's really expressive. Uh, I, by the way, that cover image is fantastic. At first, I thought this was a wrestling uh, comic, but it turns out, you know, underground MMA. Somewhat similar, I guess. I don't know. The character, she is a badass, and she's trying to save her sister from uh, evildoers. Uh, it's south of the border, if you will, and it, uh, it definitely has that grungy, grimy, action movie, B-type movie feel to it uh, with over-the-top characters and a story that just keeps escalating and getting crazy and crazier by the minute starts out fairly simple, fairly okay, and then it just goes full weird and bizarro gonzo style to the point where you have like huge obese overlord type scumbags, uh, death cults, uh, El monstruo, as as they call it in the book, there's a lot of swearing in Spanish, which I thought, which I thought was a little uh, cliched and kind of stereotypical, because oh, you're doing like a Mexican uh, south of the border type story, so you better spruce some uh, lingo in there. Uh, I don't know. I didn't particularly care for that type of uh, writing, but. The art is really cool. I love how, you know, flashback scenes get that sepia tone, different color palettes, really uh, expressive action and characters. I don't know, I think it's a nice contrast between something serious and action oriented with the uh, cartoonish sensibility. Now, please do be, you know, please be aware this book is not safe for work. There is a lot of violence, a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but there is some nudity, uh, drug usage, and just foul uh, language overall. Here is some more action so you can get a feel over the art in this book. The action is intense. It's very fluid. It's very expressive the way these characters behave on uh, the page and the way they interact with each other. The dialogue is really smooth regardless of the swearing thing that i found kind of cringy the characters the way they behave with each other is very natural yeah just over the top bombastic b-movie type uh, scenarios so if you like that i think you're gonna enjoy pound for pound from natalie chides andy bellinger and danielle miwa sentient i already talked about it you can check out my review on it because that was the most hyped book because of mr jeff lemire a lot of huge fans 
uh, out there eagerly awaiting whatever uh, Jeff writes, and I thought it was exceptional. I really liked it. I think Pound for Pound and Sentient were my favorites out of the lot, but each book has something special, so go ahead and check that video out. Very uh, operatic, uh, dramatic space story with kids surviving in space. That was pretty cool. Next up, we have The Banks with a really cool looking cover, but I unfortunately have to say this was my least favorite of the four books, but there was still something to be liked. This is written by Roxanne Gay, which I didn't know she worked on <laughs> on a uh, Marvel comic. I thought this was the first go around with comic book writing. She's more uh, famous for novels and all that stuff, and it shows because this does not really read like a comic book. I kept re reading it as a script for a movie that you might watch uh, at like a November or a January release, that type of film. It's a bank heist involving, uh, you know, a generation of uh, bank robbers, uh, the grandma, the mom, and the kid, uh, the young adult. She's uh, in her early 20s and she works at a information bank thingamajig and uh, there's a villain involved which relates to all three characters and why they wanted to pull off this heist and all that stuff. The premise is fun, casual, and interesting that I think a lot of people could, be, could get behind and, um, and read, but unfortunately I don't think six issues was enough to get the point across, you know? I think the story has interesting elements. As you can see, there's a lot of word balloons. There's a lot of dialogue in this. And unfortunately, uh, one of the things I did not like the most about this series is the, um, it's the way the panels are, the, you know, the art, I should say. It's very staticky. All the characters just, they're standing there and there's not a lot, there's no sense of fluidity, especially with it being a bank heist uh, or a heist type comic uh, story, you would think it would be faster paced with the characters being a little bit more fluid. Unfortunately, they aren't. Uh, also, some of the background characters are really trope heavy and kind of dull and uninteresting. There were a lot of times where I simply did not care about any of the side characters. Like, for example, right there, you know, it's just static images. It doesn't have that uh, movement that I would like. Like, pound for pound, that was uh, frantic in the way it presented its characters. But again, it's a different story, and I get it. The Banks, however, you know, it could have been a lot better if you would have given it more time to breathe, because it's only six issues, and by the time you're done reading it, the final issue just rushes through a lot of stuff, and it ends sort of on a dud. I think it could have been better. The concept is there. Plus, they're trying to rob, and I'm, I'm we talked about it on Omnibros, they try to rob this guy who has Bitcoin. I'm sorry, that currency does not work the way that they're setting it up in this book. I think that was a little bit lame. Uh, I suggested that this book should have been a period piece. I think if this was a uh, 70s, late 70s, early 80s uh, thriller robbing a bank of uh, like a multi-billionaire in that era instead of modern times, I think it would have been a lot cooler, a lot better, and would have left a better impression on a lot of people. But for me, unfortunately, not not the best thing in the world. I did like Ming Doyle's art. I think she really did a good job. Uh, like the facial expressions and the characters, they look really interesting. You know, the characters don't necessarily do the, <laughs> the best sensible things, but um, uh, the characters look great. Uh, aside from the static stuff, they really looked the part. And another thing, you kind of see where the story's headed. You understand what's ha as soon as you understand what's happening, you can figure out the character beats, you know, page by page and what's going to happen at the end of the book. And, you know, I, I get it. People aren't that smart. They do dumb things. And you see this in this book with certain characters. Uh, so, you know, it sucks because you have a really interesting concept that you could really explore because uh, the story begins in the 70s and then you see the mom in the uh, 80s and now the modern character uh, in the 2000s. I think you, that was really cool the way it starts and you shift through time as you see the three characters' backstories develop. I thought that was really interesting. 
but overall, you know, just uh, fell a little flat for me. I think they could have explored it in a different way, I think. Finally, Eve of Extinction, a horror book. Action horror. Basically, if you mixed Why the Last Man, uh, The Last of Us, and... Um, zombie movies this is what you get it's pretty interesting in this book uh hurricanes have gotten deadlier as in real life and they bring about mass destruction but in this book it's a little bit different with sort of this virus infecting the uh men in that area where it rains and all that stuff and they get affected by rain it brought something that started changing the men in order to reach their stranded daughter Two mothers must survive the hurricane and the horrors it unleashed. I appreciated the uh, take on the whole um, monsters and how they looked kind of bio-organic, this parasitic entities. Uh, they, remi they really reminded me of the clickers in Last of Us, stuff like that. And just, you know, the story about a family trying to make amends with each other over past uh, squabbles and series of events it's it, it 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 played beat for beat as a straight up action horror title uh you kind of figure out what's happening but it's still fun all the way through i really liked it because it's just a really quick scenario this is happening these characters are stuck in the middle of this thing and they have to escape and survive most importantly the art is, uh, by the way, this is written by Sal Simone, I think, and Steve Simone, and it's done by uh, Nick Varela and uh, Ruth Redman. The thing with this book is that the beginning art in this is pretty interesting. Here is when you, you see the virus starting. Uh, to happen with the characters as the hurricane moves into Houston. The characters reminded me of Shadowline Comics from uh, Image, like the subdivision. It, it has sort of that plain digital look. Not necessarily my favorite, but I, I grew to like it as I kept reading. But unfortunately, like for example here, I really like the way the characters look. I thought that was really cool. But then midway, it starts getting darker. Which is, you know, fitting because you lose power. It's getting dark. Monsters. And then by the end of it, uh, let's see. Yeah, I can show you guys this real time. The art changes. I think I was fine with the beginning art all the way through. I didn't necessarily want an artistic change halfway through the story. But... Yeah, if you like these sort of uh, action horror zombie apocalypse type stories where they have to survive against that thing, then you're going to have a fun time. Maybe the ending uh, could have been a little bit uh, different, but I liked it. I thought it was perfectly fine, and I stated on the uh, broadcast with uh, the Omni Bros that what I really, the horror aspect that I really enjoyed was the fact that it's a hurricane and hurricane season, you know? June through November, and it's one after the other. After the storm passes, what happens when we get another one? If the storm is bringing about this change and this infection and all that stuff, it's going to keep continuing. Other areas are going to be hit by it. So I thought that was pretty frightening uh, if you start thinking about it. But I did like the characters. I, I appreciated that it's, uh, you know, the mom... Uh, is trying to make amends for what happened with her family and how, you know, uh, she got divorced and her daughter is no longer speaking to her and now she's back and trying to fix things when all of a sudden this craziness starts happening and forces everybody to try and get along. So that was fun. A little cliche, some would say, but still, fun overall. This is my first experience with TKO Studios. I thank them so much for the opportunity to read and review these things, not only on the Omnibus Collectors Network, but on this channel as well. Thank you to TKO Studios. You guys are the best. I love these books. They're gorgeous books. The uh, editions, you know, they're taller than a standard trade paperback. They're wider too. The paper quality is great too. They kind of smell a little funky, but <laughs> I didn't mind. I thought that was pretty funny. And I am very much looking forward to Wave 3. I need to go back and read Wave 1 because those titles looked amazing and, and I'm, I'm in. I really want to check out their stuff and I like the format of binging 
uh, six issues. You do that story and you move on. Hopefully some of these can be revisited, like uh, The Banks I could see as a movie, Eve of Extinction, I don't know about that, but Sentient I could very well see a sequel comic in the future. I think it would be great. Overall, just a really interesting uh, look at independent uh, stories and just very lovely. So thank you so much. Uh, guys, have you read uh, these TKO titles? Wave 2. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. That really means a lot to me. You guys are the absolute best. I love every single one of you. Follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video. We'll